Well, the bronze medal has been sorted out. Sanchez has taken uh, that medal for Spain. Uh, now we have some home interest in this second match, the compound under 18 women's gold medal match. Let's go and meet the contenders. <laughs> Well, here we go. Our first gold medal match of the day here. And it's Hayley Bolton of Great Britain who's getting the crowd up and running here. Going up against Leah Giraud of France. Uh, Ella, we're not expecting you to be impartial here. Um, how much do you know about uh, Hayley? Halle is a really good archer. She's been having a really good week this week. I believe she qualified first in the qualification. And I think she shot a new PB there actually as well. She's been really solid through the matches, and I think she has a lot of potential this match, but you know, so does her opponent. I saw in the lineup that her opponent shot a 149 in one of the matches, so it's definitely going to be an interesting one. Well, it's Hallie Bolton who's got us underway here. She starts with a nine. Like the Spanish girls, slightly on the left, and same as Leah, so there might be a case of a little bit of breeze and needing to account for that and get used to the conditions out here. She's moving around quite a lot over there, if you watch her long rod. Really impressive that she managed to 10 out of that. Some really nice arrows to start the day. start. The Brit is going to lead here after the first end but it's impressive as well from Giro. Just one point in this one. Oh, you said it. What a start. Yeah, I think starting a match is, is so important to step on the line and be confident and start as you mean to go on. With conditions you always have to account how you can and use your first arrow as cannon fodder as I call it <laughs> <laughs> to just shoot that best shot see where it lands and adjust from there so that first arrow is really important now I'm going to ask you this because people challenge me on this one it is a sighter right that first arrow it is partly yes it totally depends on the conditions and where your practice field is and if it's in the same direction as well at World Cups we've most of the time be pretty fortunate that our practice field is really close to our finals venue and in the same direction so you shouldn't really need much difference in sighters but here today i don't believe our practice field is in the same direction as the finals mm. so the, the first arrow here is definitely a sighter where you just have to hope that you've moved it enough and if not be prepared to immediately change it you said right at the beginning that everyone's going left here well you called this one earlier on the wind coming across from the open side of uh, the range across to the house uh, and, and uh, i heard you know that the, the, you do create you called it swirly winds we're getting eddies that bounce off the building to the left hand side so it'll be very interesting now they've set a high benchmark here these two start of the second end and it's Giro trailing by one to shoot first Slightly out, I think it's just out, unfortunately. Yeah. Looked like a really nice steady shot, and I love that nod at the end of your shot saying, yeah, that was, that was good, I know what I'm doing. It's a good reassurance psychologically. Nice. 
As you say, solid shooting. She maintains that one-point lead, does Bolton. Uh, but uh, tricky match between two uh, teammates, the first match. But there's a distinct levelling up. So first question, is it easier to come on second? Can you, can you gain something, glean something from seeing two archers going up against each other in a tricky field? You definitely can, actually. Uh, it's something that most of us do when we're away and when we're not in the first matches, we'll get the live feed up and see where the first arrows go from archers that we trust and we know are solid shooters, see where they land and that can give us a really good idea of what the conditions are like and if we do need to make that adjustment before we get out on the field. Of course, you know, you want to trust yourself more than anyone else, but you can learn a lot or at least get an idea, you know, if the other archers are just shooting out in the nine you might give a little bit of adjustment so that you're hitting the 10 on the other side so you might just catch it but if people are out in the seven or eight you know these archers are good enough that they've made the finals something is going on out there and you want to be prepared for it and not start behind well the british teams up there some gold medalists in that in that group there great britain taking it both the under 21 men's and women's recurve team gold medals yesterday in a fantastic climax to the team competition here at these European Championships. They're here to support Leo Giraud's opponent on the other side of this, the shooting line. There she is, Hallie Bolton, up against Leo Giraud. Giraud trailing by one. It's a really nice start, definitely what you need to open her. And end when you're behind you need to put pressure on your opponent as much as possible and see if they'll crack or respond well Nine. that's how point difference <laughs> it's all so close in this match <laughs> like a really nice confident shot from Giro. hopefully hallie can respond with the same Still ever so slightly, I mean, so, so critical, and I'm sure I could even hit the target from uh, 50 metres, but just all drifting slightly to the left for the Brit. Yeah, I think that will be a case of a little bit of breeze, but maybe also from some nerves. Sometimes when we're nervous, we end up either pulling our release aid hand away from our face or pushing too much on our front arm, and that can, both of those things can drag the arrow left. I think considering the size of that groove, it's probably more needing a little bit of adjustment on that site. Yeah, and, and you guys always talk about having that grouping. If you got them all tight, all three arrows, then it's just a case of, of moving them across. What do you think uh, the coach is saying here? I think he was actually talking about her technique there and saying, you know, I think you, you pushed a little bit too much on the front maybe and perhaps weren't as clean on your backhand in the wind. It is so common and easy to just do everything on the front of your technique and nothing on the back and at the end of the day it is a balance with compound we have a really hard wall you can't push forever or pull forever or your aim will just go you have to do both really equally i'm going to challenge you here a little bit ella <laughs> there's lots of mums and dads and school friends and grannies watching uh, their their favorite archer out here just tell, tell me what you're talking about front and back, working on your front technique and your back technique. If you're talking to someone who doesn't know anything about archery. Of course, so you, we have a really hard wall on compound. So there's a set draw length, which you can't pull beyond. So we have obviously our, our front arm, which holds the bow and our back arm, which holds the release aid and we reference into our face. And it's our technique is equal pressure of pushing with your front arm towards the target and pulling with your back arm around the back of your head and you've got to do both really equally to be able to maintain that aim and have a really nice clean shot and it can be really difficult especially in the wind certainly can be this is a tight one here it's a two-point swing towards the no. french archer so it's uh hallie shooting first for great britain hey. She's also gone left there. And now they're all equal again. It's a really close match. <laughs> hey. a, a 
at this point, if if I were these archers, I would try aiming off instead of moving aside. I think you can do that a lot more accurately. You know, if you see an arrow land no. mid left nine, then if you aim mid right nine, you should be good in the ten. Whereas moving your sight, most people I'd say don't actually know how much a click does, which is very little. Honestly, it's only for tiny, tiny adjustments. So for that amount, you're either going to need to be spinning it a load or just aim off. It'll be far easier. <laughs> Well, whatever Bolton did there, it got her into the 10. There's a 112 available here to Giraud. But she needs to hit the 10 herself. Bit of a longer hold as well. Yeah, a little bit of movement on the front arm. I think a little bit of a longer shot, and maybe she lost a little bit of pressure there, which made her aim not quite as good and not as natural a shot as she has been making. Well, if I means is that uh, we've ended up from 111 a piece of course subject to confirmation uh, a little bit of tension by the looks of things with Giro. you know it's really hard being out there you get so nervous and you want it so much this is to become european champion as we said this is the most important competition of this year for these guys so she's really going to want it and when you're all so close and you've had a little bit of lead and you kind of lost it and you could potentially get it back you know there's a lot of emotions and when you're out there it just goes so fast it's such a short time and obviously because you're not collecting your own arrows it's far quicker than any other match that you will ever do and a very different rhythm of things so that tension can really build up and those nerves can really build up and it's hard to deal with them when you maybe haven't had that experience yet Well, it's certainly set up for a fantastic finish here. Sun's trying to peek its head out from behind the clouds. One eleven apiece, three arrows per archer to go. Who is going to claim the European title? We know that most of the crowd are right between, or right behind, I should say, Halle Bolton. No. This is a really important arrow for Gerald. Okay, it's still really close, just one point in it. I think it's really important that she responds with a 10 and shows that she's been given a window and she's going to use it. No. I saw the grimace in Bolton's face there. Not happy with that one. Gerald needs a 10 here. No. We'll dance the last arrow then. <laughs> and it's all up for grabs for Bolton. She shoots a 10. She is the European champion. Nice. She just dropped it low and again. Their facial expression gave that one away. But it does mean that Girot needs a 10 here to force a shoot off. Nice. Oh, she's just outside. And a 137 is not quite enough. And... Hayley Bolton of Great Britain takes the first gold medal of the day. She is the compound under 18 women's individual European champion.